Here we go. We can see Jean-Marie live from Hotel d'Angleterre in Geneva. How are you, Jean-Marie? I'm good. Thank you, Pietro. Hello, everybody. How are you? Nice. Connection is looking very, very good, and it's uh, it's show time there, isn't it? Show time. <laughs> so we all have enough with this period of uh, confinement. And so we are so happy to be here in Geneva. Go back to what seemed a little bit more normal to share emotions with our friends and also customers and show our new watches in a very special way which is called showtime because what we want to do is really not to show watches but to propose an experiment to propose an experience and the experience has to do with cinema we have as you can see here in this room at the hotel d'angleterre in geneva Yes. We have a lot of artifacts coming from movies. Like here, you have a prop from I'm a Legend, the movie with Will Smith. You yep. have Alien, original designs from uh, Alien. And you have here the camera that was used from Tom Hanks when he was uh, staring in uh, Apollo 13, as well as his costume. Amazing, amazing. We have uh, this prop, uh, the animatronic head from uh, the Fifth uh, Cavalier that was awarded uh, an, an award in a festival in Nif. I think you know this, uh, Pietro, in Neuchâtel, the International Film Festival. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Here we have the original hand from Freddy. Yes. It's very frightening. <laughs> this is not my favorite. I'm be very careful. A bit spooky, yeah. Actually, this is my favorite, you know, Charlie, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, yes. The pistol from Robocop, the script from MacGyver. Here, here is a shirt from Terminator 2. You go back to Robocop. We have here a piece that will be in a museum. It's from next week. It is a resin molded head of Stan, which is the largest T-Rex head in the world. Amazing. Um, we have a glove from uh, First Man that was worn by Ryan Gosling in the movie. We yeah. have Apophis, another bad guy. Uh, this is uh, the Prince of Darkness that was featured in our own movie. Yeah, uh, the one you launched in the occasion of the, uh, the Independent Days, no? For uh, Louis Monet. Precisely, yes, yes. Yeah. We have a chair from Sandra Bullock, so I want to sit on it. That's done. Fantastic. And we have uh, the signature from Michael Jackson, because Michael Jackson used to stay here at the Hotel d'Angleterre, and he signed the guest book. So it's a very special surrounding. And actually, our guests, they are all part from an experience. We have closed the showroom for you now. It's empty for you, guys. <clears throat> here is a... Actually, it is not fake. It is a movie... A movie uh, set and our guests are invited to participate to a short movie with James and at the end they are the hero of the movie. Pietro, would you like to speak about a few watches? I'm absolutely uh, flabbergasted. It's just, uh, of course, I have appreciated the creativity vibe that you've always had, but uh, since uh, the independent days and uh, this storytelling new chapter that you have opened with the independent days. We are taking things to the next step to really give customers a real experience in relation to time and to watchmaking. Is that the final scope? You're absolutely right. You know, it's not about selling watches. It's about sharing an experience. You, maybe, maybe later, if you want, you can take a glimpse from the window outside. We have also brought the Del DeLorean from Back to the Future. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> as well as Unbelievable. the Jeep from uh, Jurassic Park. So we want to give emotions to the people. I think it is very, very important. Then if they want to, if they want to have uh, one of our watches, that's fine. We are very happy. But honestly, honestly, to share the culture, to have this experience together is the most important. And what I can tell you is, I think, the world situation is difficult for everybody. For us, it was like taking a shower today. 
to see our friends that we had not seen for a long time. Uh, not everybody was here, of course, because of sanitary condition, but the one who were able to come, it was a great pleasure to, to share this moment. So I hope we will have the same with you soon. So you, you've seen a good movement so far because we've been great supporters of the Geneva Watch Days since when it was conceived. It was a brave decision to make, uh, but with Basel World obviously uh, going to crumbles and uh, you know with uh, watches and wonders being just at the beginning and nobody knows what's going to happen in next year, uh, there was a real risk for the physical events to kind of disappear for a long time. And I've, I've always praised the effort that was done to carry on and to go ahead with these Geneva Watch Days. So in the, after the first day, your, your feedback, your impression is positive. Uh, you're absolutely right. It was a big risk. You know, we spent more than uh, 150,000 Swiss francs to be here. But if you don't take any risk, uh, you don't achieve anything. And the risk is an opportunity at the same time. And for us, what is great is as you know, we are a small manufacturer. And you know as well that our, our, our watches are based on stories. So at Basel World, for instance, we, where we received uh, more than 400 visits uh, uh, during the show, it was showing the product. Here, we tell the story before we show the product because we have more time and the setting is different. So it's a, it's a different speech. And this speech is much more in line with our product category. So we are very, very happy, yes. And the, what, the link with Louis Monet, of course, Louis Monet was a curious, genius mind. Uh, somebody that was fascinated by, you know, the very meaning of, of time and also uh, the study of what was in those days really unachievable, like, you know, understanding the stars, understanding the universe and, um, and uh, transported into legible information for us humans on Earth. So. Um, is that your way to transfer this spirit of Louis Monet to try to tell stories that have to do with legend and the interpretation of time? Yes, you're right. Louis Monet was a genius. He invented the chronograph. Uh, today, we write the second chapter. We are not geniuses. So what we do is we really put our soul, we really put our heart in our creations. And these creations, they have to go beyond what is existing to pay tribute to Mr. Monet. So a good example is um, we have launched a new creation called Space Revolution. We have been working for three years on this uh, Space Revolution. It is our first space object. We don't call it a watch. And initially for the first one and a half year, it seemed impossible to achieve from a technical point of view. Finally, we managed to to, to master all technical challenges. And yeah. we, we are launching it today here in Geneva. Of course, it is not the best because of the COVID and these things, but it is 50% of uh, <clears throat> what it should be in this, uh, in, in this world. And that's what it is in any case. So, but we, we have, please. No, sorry. Can we say this? Uh, the space revolution will be shown now as a as a preview, worldwide preview. Maybe, yes. <clears throat> Let's uh, have a look. Uh, I will uh, first. I will show you show you in the showcase, so you have a bit of. Um, yeah, you see here, the showcase, the setting. Yes. It's uh, well. like the watch is floating in the cosmos. It's very hard to see, I know. <clears throat> no, 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 it's good because I'm also posting the picture as you're talking, so we can see the details in the picture I have, I have now. So uh, we're talking about a linear uh, movement uh, setup with um, a, a fully uh, sapphire crystal case. Is that correct? Yes. This is the first time I see it as well, so I am, I am asking genuine questions. Yeah. Maybe I can explain to you uh, like this. <clears throat> You know, here, here you have two uh, space stations and here you have two starships and they are coupled. These two and these two. One yeah. set is, is, uh, is moving clockwise. The other one is mo moving anti-clockwise. Five minute revolution, 10 minute revolution, which means that they are in constant move and 18 times a, uh, a year, 18 times uh, an hour, they are crossing paths. 
because actually so they're, they're, floating, they're floating all the time yes and they are superimposed so sometimes they are battling as you can see here you know one is under the other spaceship yes now yes. as i said it is our first space object from a technical point of view it is uh, it is an inverted uh, double two billion satellite and um satellite and uh, uh no uh, satellite double two billion sorry um, the, if you look at the dial itself, it's a deep space, which means it's a special technology by laser. There are some very little holes that are made in a titanium plate. And inside these little holes, uh, the light is captured. So it's nearly no reflection. You know, it's a, it's a complete black. Yeah. Uh, Every, uh, it's a limited edition of eight watches, but every one of them will be different because here underneath the hands is uh, this little piece here, which will be once in a moon meteorite, once in a Mars meteorite, once in a Murchison meteorite, once in an Allende meteorite, and so, so, so forth. Amazing, amazing. Uh, so the, the spaceships themselves are made in titanium. Of course, they may be, must be extra light. Yeah. And they are 0 0.5 gram each. Uh, then they are uh, hand finished, uh, colored, and uh, decorated with hybrid ceramic. Uh, when you see Maybe. here, can you see? Oh, yeah. Yes, I can see. It's really good. Yeah, really good. You see here uh, this yeah. marking. We didn't mark the hours or the, the hours or the minutes. We put the speed of light. So here, we measure the, the we measure the travels of the spaceships by the speed of light, which is three hundred thousand kilometer a second. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, from a technical so point of view, the watch the is also, is also yeah. special with this selector. This selector yeah. can be put in two positions. This position here is for the winding of a watch. If you put it in this position. Then you can change the hands. So you don't have to pull a crown. Amazing. Amazing. So there is a, there is a skeleton of uh, um, the case, which is in metal. And then there is an overimposed uh, extra, extra layer of sapphire crystal on top to house the four floating objects and give enough space for that to happen. Yes, you're right. There is a chassis made in 18 karat gold. And on top of this chassis, we built uh, like an aquarium, like a dome in a sapphire crystal in three parts. Yeah. In three parts, because we needed to have the indication here, uh, which is like floating in the air. As I, said, as I said, space revolution is our first space object. So we had to break the rules and we had to go all the way to creativity and not to repeat uh, traditional uh, methods. So we wanted to innovate and have this uh, special indication here floating in the air. That's incredible. I love the touch of the stars that you can see uh, in reflection of the light and uh, in the deep space, as you call it, uh, deep space surface underneath the floating object. It's really, really effective. Mm -hmm. I can, we can really appreciate even from this, uh, from this video. Mm -hmm. Incredible, incredible. So this is the first step, and it, what, what a step, I have to say, to uh, further space exploration from uh, Louis Monet. <coughs> yes. Exploration. There is one more, which is, which is called Ad Astra. Ad Astra, in Latin, it means to the stars. And this watch is a satellite 2 billion, which is a registered uh, technology from uh, Louis Monet. Yeah. You, have, you have here at 12 o'clock, you have a cage of a tourbillon which looks like, looks like a spaceship. And the upper, the upper part of the cage is in uh, titanium in purple color. Opposite to the spaceship, you have a floating sapphire, blue sapphire, 208 facet uh, piece that is floating in the air. And... Amazing. The dial itself 
is made of uh, this uh, from this technology I mentioned to you earlier, which is capturing the light. So it's deep black. Yeah. And you cannot see, unfortunately, but the eight surrounding the hour dial and the tourbillon is also very special. It is made out of an aluminium plate and there are some very tiny numbers and under the light they look like they are it gives a sense of speed you know because sometimes you can read sometimes you cannot they're very much alive depending on the light the of case course. Itse the case itself is made in titanium black dlc on the top so it's black titanium yeah. and on the side the container uh, is in um, blue Moine blue titanium and nice. Ada, Adastra is a limited run of uh, eight watches as well. And the little stone that we see uh, floating around the tourbillon, uh, maybe I'd, um, is the, if I can see well. It's a blue sapphire. Blue sapphire. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Great. And it's a one minute, one minute uh, tourbillon. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely incredible, uh, <laughs> um, jean -Marie. Absolutely incredible. May I show you a unique creation? Absolutely. I'm speechless. So I'll let you, I'll let you go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll keep following with the images that I have here so we can appreciate all the details. Here you have Stan. Stan is... Uh, a mold of the largest uh, T-Rex head that uh, has been found yet. It was yeah. discovered in South Dakota in 1989. And Stan is a resin uh, mold, mold of his head. And it's a museum piece. We have uh, a great chance to have it here during showtime. As from next week, it will be in a museum. And also, we have here a T-Rex tooth. Oh, yes. From this T-Rex tooth, we have taken a small part to craft this watch. Yes. You have, actually what you have is, uh, is an engraving of a T-Rex head. The yes. eye is in a faceted ruby. And underneath, there is the open mouth with inside the mouth, a little piece from the fossilized uh, T-Rex uh, tooth. Okay. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. That's the making of, you know, from the engraving to the color. And then inside the dial itself. And what is interesting in this watch is what is green around the T-Rex. It's a scarab wings. It's a marquetry of scarab wings, which is something it might have been done before, I'm not sure, I have not seen it myself, but I think yeah. it's very innovative and very, very beautiful. It's really... Yeah, it's like, so the dial is like a mosaic, a mosaic yes. of, of shining um, scarab, scarab uh, wings, as you say. Incredible. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a piece, I must say. Um, and it's a tourbillon as well. It's a tourbillon, yes. <clears throat> it's a unique piece. So it's called the T-Rex. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Uh, the of, if I can ask a question that I've seen passing uh, quickly, um, Louis Monet and Tourbillons is a, is a very strong story because you've come out with some of the most incredible Tourbillons. I can only mention, for example, the Sideralis Evo. It was presented uh, a couple of years back with uh, the technology of the inverted, inverted spinning tourbillons. Uh, so why, why are you so fascinated about tourbillon and what is tourbillon adding to Louis Monet? There is magic to the tourbillon. Uh, you know, it's, uh, a tourbillon is alive. It's like a car. What, what do you like in a car? You turn the key, you listen to the engine roaring, you turn the steering wheel and it starts to take direction. It's alive. Yes. And with yes. the tourbillon, it's the same pleasure. 
Now, from the irregular tourbillon, we have taken it to a further step, as you have seen with the satellite tourbillon, and now with the space revolution, this amazing piece. So a tourbillon is like, for me, is a technology, but on this technology, we can make some a product that really is alive. And this is what people want, and this is what makes our watches, I hope, very interesting. Absolutely. And you know, of course, there is this big fascination these days with the intergalactic, you know, time timekeeping. Uh, there is, for example, Konstantin Cherky who launched uh, uh, the first piece that is giving at the same time Mars and Earth, uh, Earth time, terrestrial time. Um, in terms of for Louis Monet to develop intergalactic time pieces that will be able to to accompany the human humankind to the discovery that is happening now of you know the next planets to come. Are you seeing, do you see Louis Monet uh, committed to that challenge as well for the future eventually? Or you know, just a question coming like this. Secret, <laughs> secret, Pietro, secret. Fair enough, fair enough. I think you answered the question. <laughs> Can I show you one more? Please, please be my guest. We have another, quite a few minutes. So if you are free, if you have time, we are yeah, yeah, here. Pleasure. We have another unique item. It's uh, the same uh, technology as mentioned earlier. It's a uh, satellite two billion. Whereas here, when you asked me what is the stone floating in the air for the Adastra, I told you it's a blue sapphire. Here you have a <coughs> white diamond. This diamond has 208 facets. So it's very, very, very nice. And when we come to the concept of being alive, Kurt, Jean Kurt. Incredible, uh, incredible. This piece, uh, it took a long, long time to be made because it is completely hand engraved. Uh, speciality is the dial itself, which consists of two layers. The lower, lower, sorry, the lower and the upper layer are both hand engraved. In, with different ge geometrical pattern evoking infinity. And when they are assembled, they are, when they are superimposed, they create an effect that you nearly think it is like you, ha you can see diamonds because it is so shiny, it is so alive that it yeah, is really think quite unique. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really good. Uh... Uh, filming you're doing at the moment. We can really appreciate that. It's really, really good. Yeah. Thanks to Rafael. Yeah. the best. Yes. Well done, Rafael. Thank you very much. And it's, Thank um, you. And the case, so itself, talk... the case itself is bas relief, you know? Bas relief. No relief it's, uh, engraving, yeah. it's one of the mastery of engraving, isn't it? Absolutely. And, the, and the motif, it's called infinity because it has to do with the life of flowers, of a rose. Yes. From the blooming to the rebirth, going around the case, so it's a very poetic uh, engraving as well. Amazing, and uh, I don't know if you mentioned. Sorry, if I missed it. Uh, are we talking about a unique piece in this case as well? Can you say it again, Pietro? Uh, we're talking about. Is is this a unique piece as well, or a series of uh, pieces? It is a unique piece. Unique, unique piece. piece as well, yeah. 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 <laughs> Beautiful. Then I can show you the new memory super light. Oh yes, yes. We've had already, we cheekily <laughs> shared this watch with some of our collectors and we had already quite a lot of interest. So it's called guess. super light. It's called super light because it's, the case is in titanium. The weight is uh, a little bit more than 30 grams. So it's very, very light. And you can see on the back the his historical piece from uh, Mr. Moinet, the in yeah. inventor of the chronograph in 1816. Yeah. This piece is more than 200 years old, but it still looks very young. And we have reinterpreted the invention of Mr. Moinet, the chronograph, under a new light. Unlike what a uh, watchmaker normally does, which is number one time, number two chronograph, we took it reverse we put the chronograph before the time and here you have 
under your eyes on your wrist, the whole chronograph system. And on the back is the watch system. If you want to read the time, you can read it at six o'clock on this little purple dial where you have the hour and minute. All the rest is the chronograph. But and of course, you... You have, uh, you've gone for, um, for a frontal see-through uh, to make sure, obviously, the chronograph is, is the uh, protagonist. And uh, it's good to see the horophile. Uh, chances and faith, in this case, are showing the horophile exactly at the time where we're showing the purple memories, which is the stunner. So nice to see you, Amr. Nice to see you, James. Nice mm -hmm. to see you, yeah, everyone following us. So yes, so the chronograph is the, is the protagonist and all the frontal see-through is really showing um, the gearing and all the secrets behind the making of these exceptional movements. You see what is very nice is, once again, I, have, I keep, keep saying the same thing. I keep saying the same thing is, you know, the chronograph is interesting because it's alive. And yes. especially here, because when you start it, you don't see only the hand, you see the whole movement working yes, under yes. your eyes. What I'm wearing is uh, actually the classical memories, the first one. And you can see the evolution between this one and the super light. Look at the counters here, for instance. Now yes. they are in transparent material and look, it looks much more modern, I must say. So yes. we are introducing two limited editions of uh, memories super light in titanium you have it yes. in green, and you have it in purple. Yes, yes, beautiful. And they're limited to 28 pieces, if I'm not wrong. You are not wrong, you are right. Yes, 28 pieces, fantastic. And uh, Jamal, it's interesting because, you know, we always say you can't control time, but actually the chronograph is the only way you can actually control time, and you can measure it. <laughs> and you can start it and you can stop it. Uh, and so it's a powerful, one of the most powerful complications, and it is often underestimated how sophisticated of a complication a chronograph is, because it's fairly common, a chronograph, but a nicely made chronograph is very, very hard to execute. Yes, you're right. The chronograph is probably the most useful uh, so-called complication, because you can really use it uh, for very um, different uh, purposes. And uh, there were cases in the history of, for instance, of uh, the spatial conquest, space conquest, where the chronograph was very important and it saved uh, life and missions. So the chronograph Absolutely. is definitely a very useful complication. For me, I don't have the pretension to control time because my wife is controlling me. So what can I say? <laughs> because that's probably because she's Italian. <laughs> yes, Pietro. You're right. <laughs> just a joke, just a joke, yeah. Thank you, Jean-Marie. So you. It, it is showtime, big time. I don't know if you have more to show us. Uh, uh, there's a lot going on. So we can only invite, if you are in Geneva, if you are lucky enough to be in Geneva, pop, pop in at the Hotel d'Angleterre because there is something that goes beyond and far over a simple watch exhibition. I, I, I really enjoy this and I... I feel there is more to see. There is more to see. Would you like to have a glimpse at the DeLorean from far? That would be amazing. That would okay, be follow me, please. Follow me. Yes, fantastic. So we are at the Hotel d'Angleterre with Louis Monet. Who, uh, yeah, roaming around and visiting the official presentation uh, from, the, from the brand. Yes, there's plenty of artifacts and interesting, interesting... Um, interesting memorabilia from the world of movies that we have uh, been able to appreciate, uh, guided by Jean-Marie. And yes, I can see a DeLorean. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. An absolute icon. If you, if you grew up in the 80s like myself, nothing like a DeLorean. Again, Jean-Marie, the DeLorean is an icon and a symbol of traveling across time. So it's symbolically very relevant. Yes, can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, we're saying the DeLorean is a symbol of traveling across time, so very relevant, you know, to a watch exhibition. Yes, yes, we try to be coherent. And you know this guy? <laughs> you know, I know most people from the concierge at the Hotel d'Angleterre, but that guy I've never seen before. <laughs> Nice. So you are in the room uh, opposite to the concierge, I can see. Ah, Very yes. Good. Very good. Nice one. So, so there, are, there are some other novelties that you wanted to unveil. Uh, I'm, I'm not asking for more because I know we've seen a lot and uh, I'm, I'm deeply impressed. But I don't know if you have more that you wanted to show. No, I think we have covered the, the new creations. I think you have seen pretty much everything. Fantastic. There is one more if you would like to see. It goes along with the T-Rex. Last one. Yes, last one. It's called Jurassic. Uh, you see this piece is from a dinosaur. Dinosaur bone, actually. It's fossilized, 150 million years old. So, and uh, the dial is crafted from this uh, piece. So the dial is in dinosaur. Amazing. The case itself, also, we wanted it to be fun. So it is uh, 18 karat rose gold. But on the side, what you can see, which is blue, is the blue moine, moine blue, <coughs> in on titanium. Amazing. Amazing. And this is also a, a unique piece, so there will be a, a limited run of this piece. It's also a unique piece. Unique piece as well. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> It's amazing. We can't wait to be able to review all these pieces and to list them on the, on the limited edition to fully give justice uh, to the work that has been done in, uh, in the previous months prior to this exhibition. Uh, really, really impressive, Jean-Marie. And uh, thank you so much for taking us through this uh, journey. I was thank feeling you. Sad. I was feeling sad for not coming there, but now I feel like, you know, <laughs> I, I felt the experience as well. I would like to introduce my daughter, Rafael, because yes, uh, we have a small family-run business and she did the job. <laughs> so, nice yeah, very thankful. thankful. Amazing job. Well done and great filming as well. Very Thank good. you very much. Thank you for your interest. See you soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Best See wishes you. for the exhibition. See you very soon. Ciao. Thank Bye. you. Ciao, ciao. Grazie mille. Bye. Grazie mille.